everyone. Welcome to Live Interactive English. This is Karen. Hey, everybody. I'm Shane. Today we're looking at day one of our lesson called the history of the hamburger,、Ooh. and the vocabulary words are spread, spread, the practice spread and became common in the country, chop. She chopped up the vegetables to put in the soup.、Mm. Mm. Raw, raw. The meat is raw. It hasn't been cooked. Local, local. If you need directions, just ask a local.、Mm -hmm. Traveler, traveler. Paul is a traveler who has been to many places, and you have been to many places also. I have been to Hamburg. Ah, to have some hamburger. Yeah, and that's in the story. <laughs> Hamburg, Germany, is in our story today about how the hamburger. Has gone through history. Okay,、right? the history of hamburger, right? Smart. Yes.、Mm -hmm. So it first started with the Mongols. Okay. Chopping up some meat and putting it under their saddles、All、when、right. they were riding along,、mm -hmm. and that would make the meat softer and easier to eat. Exactly.、Mm -hmm. And they rode to Russia, and the Russians thought, "Wow, we like this idea." Uh huh. And they came up with the famous dish. <gasps> Is this steak tartar? That's right.、Ah. So then the Russians brought that to Germany. To which city? <gasps> Hamburg. Hamburg. <laughs> That's right. And they thought, hmm, what would be better if we can cook this meat? That's a great idea. And then, what's the dish called? Well, I don't remember the name of the German dish. Hamburger. Is it Hamburg steak? There it is. Yes. Okay. And it wasn't until the Germans brought it to America, and、mm -hmm. the Americans thought, you know, what would make this better? I know, I know,、what? I know. Put the meat on the bun. On the bun, and that's the modern hamburger. Oh, that's why. Cool. Let's learn some more about the hamburger. All right. Enjoy. Enjoy. The history of the hamburger. Few things are more American than hamburgers. However, the history of the hamburger is much longer than the history of America. In the 13th century, the Mongols spread throughout Asia. During this time, Mongol fighters would put chopped up meat under their saddles so that the meat became softer and easier to eat. Welcome to Live Interactive English Magazine. Today's lesson is called the history of the hamburger, part one. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff, and I'm Mike. Yes, we're talking about history, but not the history of a country or a king or a famous place. Here we're talking about the history of one of the most popular foods in the world, a fast food legend, the hamburger. The history. Of the hamburger, and to begin, we're going to the country where most people would think that the hamburger comes from. There you go. Few things are more American than hamburgers. When people think of America, they think of baseball, apple pie, and hamburgers. That being said. Is the hamburger actually American? Well, this is part of its interesting history. As we continue, it says, however, the history of the hamburger is much longer than the history of America. So there you go. A lot of people might know that America, as a country, started in 1776, but according to the article, the history of the hamburger. Goes long before that. It's much longer than the history of America. So, if we're looking for the beginning of the hamburger, the roots of the hamburger, what time are we looking at? We are going to go way, way, way back in history. And guys, we're not going to start in North America or even in Europe. Get this: in the 13th century. Yes, the. 13th century, the Mongols spread throughout Asia. Apparently, this is where the history of the hamburger starts. The Mongols spread 
throughout Asia in the 13th century, and apparently they brought hamburgers with them? Anyways, more on that later. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about our first vocabulary word of the day, the verb spread. Spread, spread, spread. But what does this verb mean? Here, if something spreads, it extends over a very big area. It reaches a large number of people, or it gets to or goes to many, many places. For example, the practice spread and became common in the country. So this practice, this way of doing things started small. Maybe people were doing it in only one place, but then after a while this practice spread and everyone was doing it. There you go. So before it spread, hamburgers sort of started with Mongol warriors in the 13th century. That's a long time ago. Well, let's find out more. It says during this time, during the 13th century, during this time, Mongol fighters would put chopped up meat under their saddles so that the meat became softer and easier to eat. I do not want to go to this Mongol hamburger restaurant. This is apparently how they prepared the meat for the hamburger. They would chop it up or it would be chopped up. Now to chop is a verb, it's a regular verb, chop, chopped, chopped, and it's to cut something into small pieces. You're not slicing it, so it's a large, thin piece. You're cutting it so it might be a small sort of square or cube-shaped piece. We often chop up vegetables to put them in a salad or into a soup. You're cutting the food into smaller and smaller pieces. So this chopped up meat was put under the saddle. That is terrible. Let's look at the example sentence for chop. It says she chopped up the vegetables to put in the soup. That's what you would do. Now saddles, for those of you who don't know, are those mm. seats that you put on the back of a horse. When a rider sits on a horse, they sit on a saddle so the meat would go under the saddle between the saddle uh. and the horse's back uh. and as you ride you are making the meat softer and easier to eat. What, was the meat cooked? I don't was know. Was the horse clean? Was I'm the saddle sure. clean? It sounds gross. No. This sounds like a gross way to tenderize meat. Yes, Anyways, folks, you. with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. I'll, I'll just have the salad. Uh, uh, French fries? Uh, the hot dog? Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。同学们喜欢吃汉堡吗？你有想过汉堡的发源地是在哪里吗？是美国还是德国汉堡这个城市呢？我们这两天的课文就是要介绍汉堡的历史。那课文一开始提到，很少有东西会比汉堡更有美国味。刚刚 Jeff 老师提到几个具有道地美国特色的事物，像是棒球啊、苹果派，还有汉堡。不过呢，其实汉堡的历史比美国的历史更悠久哦，在。西元十三世纪，蒙古人的势力有散布到亚洲各地。那在这段期间，蒙古战士会把切碎的肉压在马鞍的下面，目的就是要让这个肉变得更软，更容易食用。但不晓得他们有没有用纸或是叶子把肉包起来，不然直接把这个肉放在马背跟马鞍之间，感觉很不卫生哎。刚刚 Jeff 老师用到 gross， gross， G R O S S， 这个字就是形容令人恶心的，令令人厌恶的。老师还有提到 tenderize 这个动词 ，t e n d e r i z e。tenderize 就是指使什么什么变嫩或是使软化。好，那这边有两个单字 spread。Spread， 它是动词，表示散播啊、传播、扩散或是蔓延。它的动词三态同形。那么 chop，chop chop 这个动词表示切或是剁。那文中的复合形容词 chopped up。Chopped up 表示剁开的或是切好的。至于补充单字 saddle，saddle 表示马鞍。那么 Mongol，Mongol 这个字它可以当名词或当形容词，当名词就表示蒙古人，当形容词就是蒙古人的。那顺便学一下，蒙古的英文是 Mongolia，Mongolia。这回到课文中。
The history of the hamburger. The Mongols brought the dish to Russia. There, it became a favorite dish that's known today as steak tartare. This is raw ground beef with a raw egg. By the 17th century, Russians had brought steak tartare to the port of Hamburg, Germany. The locals there had the idea to cook it. This dish became known as Hamburg steak. Okay, so the Mongols in the 13th century spread throughout Asia mm -hmm. and they brought this disgusting meat dish hamburger thing with them. Get this, the Mongols brought the dish to Russia. Ah, yes, of course. The Mongols invaded a lot of Asia and continued into Russia. And what happened in Russia? Well, we read there, there in Russia, there it became a favorite dish that's known today as steak tartare. So it's still eaten in Russia today and it's called steak tartare. What exactly is steak tartare? That's what we learn next. Steak tartare. Mm -hmm. This is raw ground beef with a raw egg. Wow. Sounds intense. It's like meat sushi. It's like meat sushi. Anyways, first of all, let's talk about ground beef, okay? If you ground something in this case, you chop it up. You cut it into small, small bits. Now here, steak tartare, it's ground beef. It won't be a steak, a single piece of meat. It'll be that piece of meat that has been chopped very finely or cut up quite finely. Anyways, let's move on and talk about an adjective, the adjective raw. If something is raw, it hasn't been cooked. So this, this steak, this beef, it has not touched fire. It has not been cooked in a pan or in an oven or anything like that. It hasn't been cooked at all. For example, the meat is raw. It hasn't been cooked. Hmm, interesting. So raw beef chopped up raw beef with a raw egg, mix it together, that's it, very simple. And then what happened? Well, a few years passed, and then we read by the 17th century, Russians had brought steak tartare to the port of Hamburg, Hamburg, Germany. So now we're getting into Hamburg, which of course will make us think of the name hamburger. What happened in Hamburg, Germany? The locals there had the idea to cook it. That was a good yeah. idea. I don't want to eat this raw steak. No. It could make me sick. I, I want to cook my steak and my raw beef and my eggs. So, Let's put it on some fire. That's right. And this dish became known as Hamburg steak. Ah. We're getting closer and closer to hamburger. And we're also getting closer and closer to something that I would eat. They've <laughs> cooked the beef. I am much more interested in eating this. So well done to the locals of Hamburg, Germany. What is a local? Well, in this sense, we're using local as a noun, a local. Local as an adjective basically means around a certain area. So a local is a person who lives in that certain area. If you live near or in Kaohsiung, you are a local of Kaohsiung, a local person. So for example, we could say, if you need directions, just ask a local. If you want to know a good place to get a good hamburger, just ask a local. They should know it's their hometown or home place. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break, but don't go away. We'll be right back after this. 刚刚说到十三世纪的时候，蒙古人的势力散布到亚洲各地。Mike 老师在讲这段历史时，他用到一个动词 invade。I M V A D E invade 这个动词表示侵入或是侵略。那在这段期间，蒙古战士他们把切碎的肉放在马鞍下，让肉变得更软、更容易吃。那后来蒙古人他就把这道菜带到俄罗斯，结果这道菜在俄罗斯变成一道广受喜爱的菜肴，现在被称为达达牛肉。那它是用生的牛角肉配上一颗生蛋。到了十七世纪，俄罗斯人把这个达达牛肉带到德国港口城市汉堡。
那那边的人可能是比较有卫生观念，他们就决定要把这道菜肴煮过。那这道被煮过的料理就被称为汉堡牌。好，先来看两个单字 ，raw，raw raw 是形容词，形容生的。那么 local。Local， 它可以当名词或当形容词。当名词就是当地人，当形容词就是指当地的、本地的。好，另外文中的 ground beef， ground beef 表示牛角肉。其中这个 ground 它是动词 grind 的过去分词 ，g r i n d grind 它表示碾碎、搅碎。那它的过去分词 ground 可以当形容词来形容碾碎的或是磨碎的。解剖课文中。The history of the hamburger. By the mid 1800s, travelers from Hamburg had arrived on American shores with their popular local dish. In 1891, an American by the name of Oscar Weber Bilby held a Fourth of July party at his cow farm. He grilled patties of ground beef and put them on buns. Thus, the modern hamburger was born. Okay, so the story of the hamburger started in. Mongolia in Asia,、yeah. and then moved to Russia, and then moved to Germany. But this is the great American food. When will we get to America? Well, Mike, you don't need to wait、oh, any、good. longer. Okay, we started in the 13th century,、mm -hmm. moved on to the 17th century,、mm -hmm. and now we're going to move on to the 19th century.、Ah. Get this: by the mid 1800s. Travelers from Hamburg had arrived on American shores with their popular local dish, the Hamburg steak. They brought the Hamburg、oh. steak to America, and soon people people started eating this and liking it, and they started calling it a hamburger. But more on that later. For now, let's talk about the word traveler. Traveler, it's a noun. A traveler is a person who travels. Okay, usually when you travel, you go to distant places. Just because I went to three Seven Elevens today does not make me a traveler, even though I did cover quite a lot of ground inside the city. No, no, no. If you're a traveler, let's say you're from Taiwan, you've been to the Philippines and America and France and Scandinavia. You have been all over the world. For example, Paul is a traveler who has been to many places. Travelers can travel for business or on holiday, but often they just like to travel. They like to see new places and meet new people. So these travelers from Germany brought the Hamburg steak, which was, of course, kind of just meat on a plate. We don't have it in quite the sandwich form that we know today. So how did that happen? Well. It says in 1891, so 120 years ago or so, in 1891, an American by the name of Oscar Weber Bilby, good name, held a Fourth of July party at his cow farm. All right, so there we are, a Fourth of July party. This is sort of the American. 1010 October 10th. It's the national birthday, and like many people, he had a party at his cow farm. Wait, wait, wait. cow farm? Yes. How about ranch? Well, it, also you wouldn't call a cow house a cow house. You no. You call that a barn. A barn. Anyways, anyways, more on the hamburger.、Mm -hmm. He,、mm -hmm. Mr. Bilby, he grilled. Patties of ground beef、mm -hmm. and put them on buns,、ah. and thus the modern hamburger was born. There Now you you've go. got the patty; it's、mm -hmm. been grilled, and it's in between two pieces of bread called buns. That's the modern hamburger. Yes, we should point out that patty is what we call the meat part of a hamburger. The buns would be the bread part; the patties are the meat part. So there he he, he built. The hamburger using the meat and the bread, and that's what we think of as the modern hamburger. There you go. Well、All、done,、right. Mr. Bilby. Well done. All right, folks. With that, it's time for us to end today's lesson. But don't go away. More fun is coming up soon. 到了十九世纪中旬，来自汉堡的旅人带着他们受欢迎的当地菜肴，也就是汉堡牌，来到美国的沿岸。那在一八九一年，一个美国人在他的牛庄里面举办国庆派对。美国的国庆日是在七月四号。
那他在这一天烤了牛角肉肉饼，还把这个肉放在小圆面包上，于是现代汉堡就这样诞生了。先来看单字 traveler。Traveler 就是旅人或是旅客。Jeff 老师解释这个单字时，有提到一些地方的名字，像 The Philippines。The Philippines 就是菲律宾，还有 Scandinavia。Scandinavia 是斯堪的纳维亚半岛。好，那我们再来看补充单字 Grill。Grill 可以当动词或当名词，当动词就表示烧烤、炙烤，那么当名词就表示烤架、烤肉架。好，至于 patty。P A T T Y 这个字 ，patty， 它表示肉饼或是小馅饼。再顺便补充一下 ，Jeff 老师刚刚有提到 ranch，R A N C H，ranch 就表示大牧场或是大农场。老师还有说到 barn，barn barn, B A R N 这个字，它可以用来指牛舍或是谷仓。好了，那么以上是今天的讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。大家好，我是 Hanny。在今天的课程中，我们要介绍两个文法重点。第一个是形容词比较级的用法，第二个是 so that 的用法。首先，我们来学习形容词比较级的用法。形容词比较级用来比较两者之间程度的差异。在构成形容词比较级时，单音节或是部分双音节的形容词是在字尾加上 e r， 像 tall 高的变成 taller 较高的。如果形容词字尾有 e， 则直接加上 r， 像 cute 可爱的 ，cuter 较可爱的。如果字尾是子音加短母音加子音的时候，必须重复字尾再加上 e r， 像 big。大的 ，bigger 较大的。如果字尾是子音加上 y， 则必须去掉字尾 y， 再加上 i e r。例如 ，easy 简单的 ，easier 较简单的。那么部分双音节以及三音节以上的形容词，则是在前面加上 more， 像 famous 有名的 ，more famous 较有名的 ，delicious 美味的。More delicious, 更美味的。有些形容词比较级是不规则变化，像 good， 它的比较级是 better。那么 bad 比较级是 worse。Little 的比较级是 less 等等。好，以形容词比较级表达 A 比 B 更怎么样？常见的句型是 A 加上 is 加上形容词比较级加 than 再加 B。我们来看几个例句。Frank is taller than his father. Frank 比他的爸爸更高。Sandy is more careful than her sister. Sandy 比他的姐姐细心。Few things are more important than your health. 字面上的意思是没有什么东西比你的健康更重要，也就是指你的健康几乎可说是最重要的。最后。我们来学习 so that 的用法。so that 用来引导表示目的的副词子句，意思是以便怎么样，好让怎么样，或是为的是怎么样。其中的 that 可以省略不用。例如 ，Hank turned the TV off so that he could concentrate on his homework。也可以说 ，Hank turned the TV off so he could concentrate on his homework。Hank 把电视关掉，以便能专注在作业上。以上是今天的重点整理，我们下次见喽 ！See you next time. Bye. <音樂>性感的嘴唇很重要，跟保养唇部相关的英语一定要学会。今天我们要介绍的实用句型是。欢迎收看《就爱讲英文》，英文我是悠悠，我是季安。我们今天讲到美妆教学最重要的呢，除了这个粉底液 （foundation makeup） 之外呢，还有我们的眼妆 （eye makeup）。嗯，眼妆这样不错吧？不错，好美哦，好,好美。然后接下来就是我们的嘴巴，嗯,嗯，唇彩。现在都很多人重视这个唇彩，求嘴。
。好，我们今天唇彩呢，<笑>全部都跟我们嘴巴有关，我们的 lip，, lip 我们的唇有关哈。OK， 所以唇彩就是 lip makeup。lip。make up，、嗯、然后在这个上唇彩之前，一定要确保我们的嘴唇要湿润，不然要干干画起来还蛮可怕的。对，滋润对不对？就像现在这个样，<笑>所以你可以讲 ：Before putting on any makeup, make sure to moisturize the lips with some lip balm. Balm. Before putting on any makeup, make sure to moisturize the lips with some lip. <笑> Boom. OK， 所以我刚刚讲的就是你要确保这件事情哈，就是 make sure， make sure， make sure to 干嘛干嘛。Mm-hmm. 那我刚刚说滋润你的双唇，就是 moisturize， moisturize。好， moisture 是这个名词啊，那 moisturize 就变成是动词了。OK，、mm-hmm. 那用什么 ？With 什么什么东西？用这个 lip balm， lip balm 就是护唇膏。嗯，嘣，非常合理。对，所以呢，我们嘴巴才会干干的、啊嗯，那这个上妆才会好看，对不对？对对对,对,对，是的，合理，对不对？合理呢，就是 that makes sense。that makes sense。某件事情 makes sense、嗯。OK， 所以如果你听到有个东西狗屁倒灶啊，这个不对啊，不合理啊，合理啊你就可以说 that doesn't make sense。这不合理啊，你比我还会化妆。对。That Doesn't make sense. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Oh. <笑>对，然后接下来我们要涂我们最喜欢的口红咯， mm-hmm. 或是唇蜜咯。对。Okay. 那你就说 ，And then I put on my favorite lipstick. 还有什么 ？And some lip gloss. 是的。Okay.、Mm. And some lip gloss. Lip gloss 是这个唇蜜。好，那 lipstick 是口红。Okay. 是的。刚刚不到，<笑>好，不管呢，人家怎么画，这个樱桃小嘴都很美，所以你一定要去问人家，哎，你怎么画的呢？怎么说？你怎么办到的？我怎么办到的？就说 How did you do it? How did you do it? How, how did you do it? 我看我没有镜子，很难画。对，好，<笑>接下来看今天的 Life Action。哇哦，悠悠 ，I like your lip makeup. Thank you. 嗯。How did you do it? Well, well, before I put on any makeup, I make sure I moisturize my lips、mm-hmm. with some lip balm. Lip balm. Mm-hmm. Yes, lip balm. Oh, okay. Yep. That makes sense. And then I put on my favorite lipstick and some lip gloss. Right. Cool. Yeah. Do you want to try some? Sure.